Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Ambrose. Our mass intention this afternoon is for our dear Jeff Mattins. Our opening song is number 420, All Are Welcome. the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. From our gospel reading this evening, we are reminded to be as diligent as Martha and as present to the Lord as Mary. For the times we've neither been diligent or praying to the Lord, let us ask for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my thoughts, through my thoughts, through my most sweetest thoughts. Therefore, I ask the blessing Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity. They may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the terebinth of Mamre as he sat in the entrance of his tent while the day was growing hot. Looking up, Abrams, Abraham saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he ran from the entrance of the tent to greet them, and bowing to the ground, he said, Sir, if I may ask you this favor, Please do not go on past your servant. Let some water be brought that you may bathe your feet and then rest yourselves under the tree. Now that you have come this close to your servant, let me bring you a little food that you may refresh yourselves and afterwards you may go on your way. The men replied, very well, do as you have said. Abraham hastened into the tent and told Sarah, quick, three measures of fine flour, knead it and make rolls. He ran to the herd, picked out a tender choice steer and gave it to a servant who quickly prepared it. Then Abraham got some curds and milk as well as the steer that had been prepared and set these before the three men as he waited on them under the tree while they ate. They asked Abraham, where is your wife Sarah? He replied, there in the tent. One of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah will then have a son. The word of the Lord. Our response to the Lord's word is, he who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ on behalf of his body, which is the church, of which I am a minister in accordance with God's stewardship given to me to bring to completion for you the word of God the mystery hidden from the ages and from generations past. 
but now it has been manifested to his holy ones, to whom God chose to make known the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. It is Christ in you, the hope for glory. It is he whom we proclaim, admonishing everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may, we may present everyone perfect in Christ. The word of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat beside the Lord at his feet listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There's need of one thing only, and Mary has chosen the better part and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. looking through these homilies on my computer the other day in order to get ready and very often I can find one for every Sunday that I've given once, twice, three times before but this one I have never had to do before I don't know why July 16th comes around well actually 17th tomorrow frequently, like every year. But at any rate, I guess that's just the way it is. I couldn't copy an old one, so you don't have to listen to one I gave five years ago, if you were paying attention then. I don't mean you don't pay attention, but that's okay. In the reading from Genesis this day, we hear the story of Abraham seeing three men while he was sitting at the entrance of his tent. And we hear how they were welcomed and a meal prepared for them by Abraham and Sarah. This was not just a chance that something happened, uh, that this was not a normal practice. For even today, the nomads who wander the deserts welcome those who pass near them. It was considered like an obligation that in the wilderness of the desert, it was not just a good gesture, a gesture, but it was thought of as sort of a social requirement because of how in, inhospitable the wilderness was. There was not much food and certainly not much water. Abraham, who was sitting at the entrance of the tent that day, noticed that it was growing hot. 
we would say it was nearing midday as the sun rises higher in the sky. Something about mad dogs and Englishmen don't go out or do go out in the noonday sun, something like that. At any rate, um, Abraham sees the three men nearby and he runs to greet them. He asks them a favor. That favor was, please do not pass your servant by. And we kind of know the rest of the story. He has a servant bring water to wash their feet and bids them to rest under the large tree, a tenebrit. We call that an oak tree. I don't know if it's really an oak in the desert, but it's a large tree. As they do so, he asks them to let him bring them a little food that they may refresh themselves before continuing their journey. They say, very well, do as you say. He tells Elizabeth to make rolls, picks a choice steer, and tells his servant to quickly prepare it. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think this walking around steer would be very quick to be prepared. I mean, you know, you gotta do a lot of stuff. Maybe there was more than one servant. Um, he gets some curds, kind of like curds, cottage cheese, and milk, and sets them there along with the steer, and I'm assuming the rolls also, because if my wife was told to make rolls, and I didn't have her bring them, there would be all heck to pay. And he sets these before them. Then he waited on them while they were sitting there. Now one explanation of the three who were traveling together, if you will, or at least appearing before the tent, were that they could have been uh, sort of a precursor of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Or they could have been, and if you read on further, God and two angels who just happened to be on their way down to Sodom and Gomorrah to take care of business. That's probably next week's reading. We really don't know who they are, but the following verses we see who, when they promise that Sarah will be with child, or will have a child, by this time next year. And we can assume that only God would know that. In today's gospel, however, which I think is very well related, we see a woman <coughs> named Martha who welcomes Jesus as he's traveling along. She had a sister Mary who sat and listened to him speak. After a while, we, if you remember, we see Martha address Jesus that she is burdened with much serving and asked Jesus, do you not care that my sister Mary has left me to do all the serving? We have to assume also, there's some assumptions here, that Jesus was traveling with the apostles and some disciples, and usually uh, some of the women who would take care to make sure that Jesus was fed and watered, well, whatever. Um, but um, Martha then tells Jesus to have Mary help her, as we remember. What does he answer her? Martha, Martha, kind of like, there, there, dear. Are you anxious and worried about many things? Of course you are. Then he tells her that Mary has chosen the best part, and it will not be taken from her. Note here, here also that he doesn't tell her that her part isn't good also. It's just not the best one. It's like going out to serve the poor or the downtrodden in our area. If we feed and clothe them, we are doing charitable works. But if we fail to do the other part, which is to bring the word of God to them, we have left out the better part. Is not both of these a call to service? as Catholic laywomen, laymen, and clergy.
Let us now arise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father of the the Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all angels, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, he was in front of the Virgin Mary, and he did it in him. For our sake he was crucified out of Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will not come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I can believe in one spirit, the Lord be your God, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is the Lord and Lord of our time, who has spoken through the prophets. I can believe in one holy God and the Messiah Church. I can confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Let us now present our prayers and our petitions to the Lord. <clears throat> For Pope Francis and church leaders, may the Holy Spirit guide and inspire them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders and the salvation of the whole world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, those in hospitals and nursing facilities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in need of financial support, for the lonely and forgotten, those in our book of intentions, and for those requesting prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sister diocese, our sister parish, and our St. Ambrose Parish family, especially our volunteers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Jeff Mattins and Gary P. Brown, for whom this Mass is celebrated, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now ask the intercession of our Blessed Mother as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing number 438, O God, you search me.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God on my depart. The Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of us in church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the Lord, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what it has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered apart by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, <coughs> made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold, manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in the company of the choirs of angels, we praise you as with joy we proclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew pot, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Ambrose, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coheres to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, the glory of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let's offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be changed my life, but only the same word my soul shall be.
the second training workshop of the Extraordinary Ministers of Holy Communion for all parishioners who feel the call to this ministry will be held on Saturday, July 30th at 10 a.m. in the Parish Activity Building. Attendance at this workshop does not imply an immediate commitment on your part. You are welcome to come just to learn about this special ministry. Please call the office to register. Please sign the RSVP book in the vestibule for Monsignor Mike's 50th anniversary at St. Joseph Parish on August 13th. We will also be having coffee and donuts between the masses on Sunday, August 14th at the Parish Activity Building as we continue celebrating Monsignor Mike. A big thank you for all a big thank you to you all for participating, volunteering, and praying for the success of our first ever golf outing this weekend. It was a great success and everyone had a fantastic time. Have a blessed week. So just before the, uh, the final prayer and blessing, I want to echo the last uh, announcement. It was a fun day today at Eastern Hills. We had 11 teams, that is 44 people, and then volunteers and we were invited for lunch. We were about 55 in, in total, which was wonderful for the first time. And uh, uh, one of our prisoners, uh, team one, so, uh, Joe, uh, Joe Hucklin, they, uh, they, they beat me by uh, just a little bit. I was number two. <laughs> so, but next year. So, uh, thank you. It was fun and uh, just to build community. My joy is when everybody is happy. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O oh Lord and lead those who have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your May Almighty God bless and protect you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our closing song is number 444, Blessed Be the Lord.